Uh, honorable speaker, let me take this opportunity to greet yourself. Uh, the honorable member of the mayoral committee, the chief whip of council, chairpersons of section 79, the executive mayor of councillors and also the executive mayor of the district municipality who is present with us, uh, our acting municipal manager and the entire administration, traditional leadership, religious fraternity, our business stakeholders and NGOs. Uh, let me also say all stakeholders that are present, uh, members of the government baby, the community and all protocol observed. I greet you all in the name of Omgov, uh, Councillor Mfuke. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, it is very painful and it is also a very glorious day for the different members of community of Governing Begi today. While we, are just we have just celebrated 28 years of democratic breakthrough, communities within the municipality are unfortunately having mixed motions about our municipality and also the country. This is as a result of us finding ourselves in different conditions of life, both material and in mind. Our communities are ravaged by the inherent contradictions of inequality, unemployment and poverty. On a daily basis, they listen to many of us telling them about how not to lose hope. Some of us are just populist demagogues who thrive at the opportunity of alarming other people's suffering, while others are genuine champions of change in the quest for a better life for all. Our people must at this point in time be able to use their accumulated past experiences to see through a liar and a leader of purpose. Our council continues to be a site of circus instead of an honorable house. Characterized by festival of ideas on how to change our people's lives for the better. I call for calm and order to all elected public representatives of our people. Being a leader does not need you to be a critical think tanker, but a listener who listens to what the people need and try to seek or find the simplest ways of making that happen. Most of the time, people themselves will tell you as their leader as to how it can be done. Governing big municipality is one of the fastest growing municipalities in the province second to only Steve Chwete. The latest stats so far indicate that we are about 380,000 people living within the boundaries of Governing Bay, with projections of growth sitting at 3.3% for the next eight years. I unfortunately do not agree with the, pro with the projections because of the vision we have for our municipality. Governing Peggy currently contributes about 12% of the province's economy and remains the biggest economy than all economies in Herz Sibande combined. This means that if a proper vision can be put in place, and sufficient effort is invested to realize this vision, we can be a city or become the city that we deserve to be. A city that cares for its people. A city that provides adequate services 
to its citizens. A city that has unlimited opportunities for its people and its youth in particular. A city that other towns and cities look up to for good practice and innovation. This therefore can only be a modern city of excellence. And that shall be our ultimate vision. And 2030, here we come. Planning is the most critical and crucial part of any successful mission into the war. A long-term plan that will see you winning the war must be derived first before the rest. It is a given that you must first win the war before you start fighting. Otherwise, there is no need for you to start fighting because you would have already lost. Municipalities are given a five-year periodic planning cycle, which in our case must serve as the building blocks towards the ultimate <coughs> goal. We have listened to our people as we have been doing consultations, and we now have a consolidated ITP for the next five years that must be considered by this council. Let the work begin immediately so as we can attain our goal in good time. Let us first settle our people comfortably. Governing the municipality has just above 113,000 households, which 106,180 of them are waterborne households and 103,407 are connected to sewer network and 112,658 of them are connected to electricity. This gives a clear indication of the state of our infrastructure. Not all our people have access while we are building even more human settlements. This calls for a deeper form of investment into infrastructure uh, construction projects, in particular revenue generating infrastructure. That will then allow for the municipality to create financially stable and also capacity driven programs to continue sustaining the ever growing population within the municipality. We are going to establish a total of around 20 new formal settlements with amenities necessary to for our people. These developments, while creating proper settlements for our people, they will also bring about massive opportunities for the manufacturing sector, construction, engineering, and many other businesses for local communities. Jobs will also be created both at a permanent and also part-time activities or activity. Skills will also be developed on an ongoing exercise. These developments will be spread across Governing Begi as some will be implemented in Bethal M. Zinoni, Charlie Salis, Kimros, Leandra Lebohang, Sekunda, and Brandon Village. Note be taken that these settlements do not include the private developments that are happening on a daily basis within our municipality. These developments will be receiving support from other spheres of government for installation of all other social amenities such as schools and health facilities. It is also prudent that we report on the progress made on some of the pronouncements made in the in the state of the province, in the state of the municipality last year, such as that of four schools that were announced. Three of these schools are at the final stages of designs, and shall this financial financial year start with construction, and the other one was long ago designed and concluded, but had a challenge of land. This matter has since been attended to 
by both the municipality and the Department of Human Settlement and is about to receive its finality. These developments will also be accompanied by the establishment of an industrial park which will seek to create stability to our economy and job sector. This industrial park will be one of the catalytic projects drawing in investment from across the globe. While appreciating the massive project uh, that is coming, we must first appreciate the businesses operating with, uh, within our municipality with their continued support to the municipality and its, and, and its communities in trying to intervene on the inherent challenges, particularly infrastructure challenges. These include, amongst many, the involvement on, of SASO in the upgrading of ele our electrical infrastructure network, the upcoming construction of a waste transfer station by Evenda Gold Mine, the retrofitting of high mass lights in in Liandra by Tungela, the resurfacing of roads and regravelling by Katleho in Bethal and Mzinoni, and many other business interventions that are happening and that are still going to happen. We say thank you to all these businesses, but you can still do more. Let me take this opportunity and thank all stakeholders that have assisted us as the municipality in the development of our infrastructure master plans. This will now allow us to act with knowledge on how we must develop and maintain our infrastructure moving forward. While we appreciate the contributions that are being made, it is very important that we must find ourselves around the round table with all sectors of our society, in particular business, so as we can be able to consolidate ourselves, move as a collective towards one direction, instead of the current silo form of thinking and implementation of projects. This therefore calls for an economic summit that will sit urgently as our economy needs intervention and guidance so as in, we can start assisting in the fight against unemployment and poverty within our communities. This economic summit must be held adjoined with the energy summit as energy has now become a basic need that drives all other basic needs as traditionally known. Today, if there is no petrol, diesel, gas, or even electricity, there is no water to drink, there is no food to eat, and also there is no warmth in our shelters. The agency of this summit compels us to host this summit within the next 90 days. This platform shall also be used to close the gap or the lacuna that exists with the absence of an active local economic development forum that will not resemble business but instead demographics of our social economic standing as the municipality. As we all know that governing Begi has serious sewer challenges we have, as the municipal, municipality, structured our budget to prioritize sewer and water projects for a budget over 80 million, so as we can be in a position to upgrade and create capacity for our people not to live in sewer. Projects that are proposed within the 80 million exclude the maintenance of, of infrastructure within the same sector for the next financial year, starting from the 1st of July. Speaking of projects, it is unfortunate 
for us as governing big communities that we are unable to spend the entire budget allocated uh, the, in a grant form while we are having infrastructure challenges. I would want to call on communities to desist from, from stopping projects when they have interest on subcontracting and employment opportunities, but instead follow the given platforms to pursue their interest. Communities must also assist us in ensuring that projects are not stopped as they are their own and for their own benefit. On the other hand, electricity has been a thorn in the flesh for both ourselves as the municipality and also communities, in particular in Bethal and Zinoni and in Embalenk. We have since made significant progress since the last, uh, last summer in Embalenke, even though not all sections have, are having constant supply, but the strain of long hours of load shading and load reduction has been reduced and as we speak, limited hours are, and limited sections are being load shaded. We are still making interventions to the network and eventually there will be no load reduction or load shading in all sections in that particular area. We are also busy with the interventions in Ethal M Zinoni by ensuring maintenance of network and upgrading of capacity. We have just started with the designs for the construction of a brand new 88 kVA substation which should be concluded in the next two years. This is done as a long-term solution as we are busy with the short to medium-term solution program. The load shedding challenges that are currently engulfing this particular area are being attended to. Electrical smart meters are being installed as we have already installed over 1,300 and going to 17,000 plus in the past three months. This will not only assist in controlling the load but also assist the municipality in generating revenue so that we can be able to service our ESCOM account and also do maintenance of the network. Roads, stormwater are also another form of challenge that has recently surfaced for our communities within Governing Big. And therefore, we, we commit to an intense program of repair and construction of the said items by first ensuring that there is equipment to do these services. This includes buying of yellow fleet, buckets, tools, and relevant material to do maintenance. We are also very happy to announce that there will be interventions from Sandra with regards to the reconstruction of the national roads which are hosted by Governing Bay. That includes the N17, R35 and R38. The province has finally also agreed to the long outstanding uh, call uh, which has been seated with our ITP, that of uh, upgrading the so-called road of death, the road between Secunda and Embalenge. As, as we speak, the that particular project is on design phase by the province and will in 2023 start with construction. We will therefore be embarking on a large consultation program to all affected stakeholders, in particular those who, who are in the transport business. People must find our roads conducive to use so as this will not only assist in saving lives, but also it will assist 
in the reviving of our tourism and assist in the rebuilding of our economy. Having spoken about tourism, it is very important that we promote our municipality and the diverse cultures that we host. In the month of heritage, we are therefore going to host an arts, culture and tourism week with a possibility of the relaunch of Sejakufe if resources permit. Tomorrow, we will be unveiling the month of young people, where young people must intensify their struggles to emerge. It is unfortunate that our young people in majority have developed a do-for-me old people syndrome, failing to understand that the laws of nature as they stand do not agree with what they have adopted. Let me try and revive you, young people. One of the laws of nature is what is called negation of negation. This principle of life simply says, the old shall continue to fight for existence, while the new shall fight for emergence. I hope it sits well with young people and even the old guard. We as the old guard are hell-bent on holding on to what worked for us when we were young and that changed for the better for us in the past. Change shall in most of the time be a problem for us as old people. The truth of the matter is that the older we become, the more conservative and complacent we become with the status quo. In short, we simply do not see change happening because we are comfortable. Young people of governing Begi must derive their own path in making themselves and governing Begi municipality a center of excellence. I, together with patriotic members of this community, are going to give you, young people, an opportunity to discuss your path through a youth summit that shall be held over a period of two days and give you sufficient time to engage on your path on the 26th and 27th of June 2022. In this summit, young people must map the road from 2022 to 2027 on how they, they see themselves thrive economically, skills-wise, and so on and so on through a governing big youth development strategy under the theme governing big youth creating opportunity opportunities under a new normal. Women, children, and disabled people are also a priority to us. It is understood that these societal groups continue to be victims of abuse within our communities. It is a joint responsibility that we must all work together in combating this particular pandemic. We are therefore in August and October respectively going to hold a gender summit and a disability consultative summit. Honorable Speaker, in conclusion, as part of our vision, it is to come out of ESCOM debt so as we can start a new developmental project, which one of those projects is to build a new building for the municipality headquarters in Secunda by 2030. Let us build Governing Begin Municipality 
to live up to the person that it is named after. That can only be realized if we work together, not against each other. Those who do not dream will never see a new world being created. Governing Begi, a model city of excellence. I think.